Hello and welcome to our conversation today. I'm Hakan Elgar from Securitas Turkey. I'm the country controller and we have a very important guest. Uh, Hakan Wimberg is with us. He is the former CFO of Securitas Group. And also he has an entrepreneur uh, from different uh, companies. Uh, really, it is a great pleasure for us to host you today. Uh, and uh, whenever I talk with my colleagues, I have introduced that we have our guest is really very uh, important for us. He is almost the, the father of all the things, the measurements, the KPIs. Today we talk the gross margin, the cost, operating margin, the six fingers. Uh, we, today we will have a chance to listen from the first hand, let's say. Welcome, uh, Hakan. Uh, how are you? And uh, is this the first time uh, in Turkey? Have you ever been in Turkey? Uh, I learned that your name also is Hakan. Yes. So I feel it's the time to come to Turkey. It's my third time in Turkey because, unfortunately, my travel during my working life has been to where I have visited. Turkey just came just before I left. Hakan, then you learn that what I learned from you it means king in Turkey. I, for my whole life, I haven't known that. And, and I guess, and also the, the Norwegian kings are called Hakan. So maybe we are kings. A good sign. At least it's good to believe that you're king sometimes. And I'm happy to be here. And I'm, I'm now 65 years old. I'm not retired. I could never retire because I don't have a So I work with. Security companies in India, city one in Sweden. I had a two startups in healthcare. One, one is like an alarm monitor in central for healthcare, and the other one is providing telemedicine in India. So I still work and travel a bit. I'm on the board of an Indian security company called SIS that I was part of for a long time. And the copy of journey is it finalized or the copy of journey is finalized? How are you doing this? Good. And today, one of our main uh, topics will be the approximate drag. We are also the author of this book. It is. It looks like a business book, uh, mainly talking about maybe at the first impression numbers, but it is more than that. Today, we will have a chance to talk about approximate drag uh, and uh, get your feelings. Uh, just to uh, for the people, the newcomers to Securitas, uh, we want to learn about you. We want to know you more closer. How did your Securitas journey start? I did. I did work for a portfolio investment company. At the time, they owned half of Securitas, but then there was some financial turmoil. Just became 100% owned, and then the, the company I worked for was split in two parts. The part that became Securitas that I joined was run by Gustav Dugan, who still is the main owner because they have agents, they, 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 they have the dominant ownership of Securitas. And, and so then I started in 1985. And I was, I had the same job in Kilda for the time. I was the bookkeeper, I was officially a bookkeeper, accountant, and then I grew from 80, 80 million euros to 8 billion euros. Then, of course, the job changed, and you could develop yourself as well as the company. I worked, uh, I came in 85 to Kilda. 87, you know, for Sherling. Enough, he was only in the program for five years between 97 and 92. Then from 92, 93, it was uh, a very too much time in Norwegian. Yeah, oh my god, the CEO, yeah, he worked there. So, okay. And the journey started. One interesting thing uh, when we 
read the book, you also had an experience as a guard on the summertime. So actually, you 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 have been in the kitchen before you start the bookkeeping. Well, that was in the summertime. But I was too scared of that. It was a huge career with me. They told me that if the sun back your head when you walk on it, you can never become a student again. I was always scared, you know, when you walk through these patrols and people and you heard all the people from the one Just a small reminder for our uh, followers. Uh, they can ask their questions via yeah. uh, the chat box. If there's an, yeah, I guess we had a problem with the sound, but is it solved? Okay. okay. I will put here. They want to hear you better. Okay, that's fine. Okay. And as you said, during your your secure plus journey. If you performed then a great performance for you. Yes. It started from yeah, 20 million euros to 8 billion euros. Then you leave and a great expansion in volume size, more than 12 countries. Uh, and I guess uh, you have lots of stories. Uh, I so Exactly. Right. One of the questions. Yeah. yeah. Was in the food, which is what 
第一个在国际冒险啊，社会上，我一波先做公司，还有他的，我就还有他的 mom as well。So it also created a common language for people. Yes, uh, I understand that uh, throughout those expansion years, um, the acquisitions first in started in Europe, then they could have first uh, Atlantic and the U.S. organization. So how was the communication and uh, how was the uh, highlights at the time that creating this common language. I think that the management frame was poor. And, and uh, to meet with people, we always had a policy that you travel to the places where you have the problems. You don't have the problems come to you. Uh, and, and so part of the culture was walking the talk. That, that people that were in responsible had to show themselves when you had a problem. And it was always a balance of making acquisitions, finding new companies, and building common values and common grounds in order to make it work. And of course, the book was a way to write the story about how it happened, but hindsight is always good. So when you are in the middle of things, maybe you don't realize what all the philosophies are, but uh, I think one one main reason for everything was that there was beauty and the passion and joy and that we were committed as a person. I think that was important in building the culture. And then combined with a kind of theory that security is something that's needed in society. So if you did it well, there was a need and it was going to grow in the economies of the country. I guess uh, now we, we always talk on our day to day life. We are focused on security, the security task. We, are in, we, we call it the protected service approach. Uh, different parts of the, the security business now we try to bring together. At the time, I guess there were a lot of discussions about being a multi service company, maybe a facility management company. Uh, Looking back to your your your, your time, uh, how do you evaluate the decisions at that time? But looking from today's perspective, we, we always thought that any service and, and solution for for customers is better if you focus. Now that's also one of the things in my book that focus drives development. And we knew that if we wanted to make more money, you have to add value to your clients. And mm -hmm. adding value, you do more if you solve the problem with a good solution. So words like bundling services, doing a little bit of everything, creates lack of focus. And when I if you pick a financial system for a company, if you're a construction company, you, you pick one system because it supports project accounting and things like that. And when you're a service company, you pick another. And, and again, a lot of finance companies or finance systems can't provide everything for everyone. So you have to pick what's best for you. So in a sense, if I convert my bookkeeping knowledge to, to business, then if you focus on something, then, then you have a higher chance of creating success. And I think from our point of view, we had different skill sets, the management team at that time. So Thomas Dylan, who was the CEO for a big part of the journey, he, he was very uh, educational in the sense that educating the market, the customers, and ourselves about the theories of security and why it's good to focus. And then we had other skill sets like me trying to keep track of it, and uh, Armand Scott of them was the guy with the operation. So we we complemented each other. But Thomas was always very strong, and in order to to yeah, to keep your clients to create focus and profit, you had to had to be dilute security.
you said something important. You you told that um, there are some thoughts in your book. I mean, there are four thoughts yes. in the book, and focus was one of them. Yes, and still uh, one of the most important ones. Uh, can we talk about the other ones as well? Let's start maybe with key point and simple. Actually, we, we, we start to talk about it, but sometimes, you know, making, keeping simple is not that much easy. So, in order to aggregate or make a summary of things, to pick the KPIs that are the most important, you need to understand a lot of details. And since I represented a trade of details before the conference, I can say that if, if the high level KPIs were not supported by reality, no one would trust you because people are much smarter than you think. They see through bad KPIs. So we, we talked just before this session started and we were okay about where to make profit here. And you say that combination of technical and guarding actually creates a little bit better growth, more value for the client, a little bit better growth, and then also a higher share of the profitability. If, if that's true, it's a strong message, and which I understand is a fundamental that you base your decisions on. So of course, keeping it simple and being able to understand, understand the, the global KPIs and helps to get the details. Then also, if you want to communicate to people, of course, it's much easier to communicate to everyone if the language is very simple. And but, it works. Yeah, and if it's works. not based on the, if it's not based on the truth, it won't. But simple and true. That's hence that's a little bit approximately right. But and if, if it is sort of true, and, and if the details work, you get them to fit. The message becomes really strong. And you also say something also very important uh, in respect. Uh, tell us that we should focus on the factors to generate the result, yes. not the result itself. Uh, this uh, really in our day to day life that we try to follow as well. Uh, because if we look at just the result, maybe we lose our focus. We should, maybe we, we should focus on, on the factors that create them. One. One way of saying is that you live on how much your customers pay and then how much you have to pay to do things. And that's the result. But you need to focus on the dynamics between the factors that generate the result. And sometimes lower costs are not the solution, or higher revenues are not the solution, but it's a mix of it. Then you just can't say we need to improve the profit with 10%. It's, it's too shallow as a target. I know the stock market only needs to know is your revenue growing and is your profit growing. That's the only thing they focus on. But then they can't run the company. That's a way of, that's the outcome that they look at because they are investors. But when you run the company, you have to understand what makes it fit. And that goes for every business, which I have big difficulties to communicate when you come into a new business and you talk about six fingers, they say, oh, that works for Spilgrass, but it doesn't work for us. But it's not the same six finger. We're talking about factors, like how do you drive your volumes? How do you drive your efficiency? How do you drive your capital usage? And what's the leverage in your business? Leverage nowadays means how much debt you have. I've learned that the new fashionable world, world is scalability, but it's still the same principle that if I can do more and it's efficient, then the more I do, the more profitable it gets. That was the leverage thing. So anyway, what was the question? <laughs> keep finance keep simple. Keep simple, keep yeah, exactly. But, uh, maybe I can ask that, uh, what would be your recommendations for our young finance people, our accountants? Because uh, Sometimes uh, people can confuse that uh, where to stop. I mean, there's that borderline between the finance and the operation that create the factors. Uh, so uh, you say that the finance should support. Yes. Uh, but 
not control this. Like maybe not right now. We have to get the KPIs developed and list new ideas, and then you have to adopt. So the it's not to implement with a hundred percent perfectness six fingers is to try to understand what drives the business and then when the business develops you get new business areas and new things you have to find the six fingers or, or the seven fingers or the five fingers that fit that business area. Yeah. but the concept is the same to find the kpis that fit your your, your business so uh, i think you want to embrace the new but you don't want to lose the continuity and, and your culture. And so far, I mean, I left Securitas in 2007. I still read the annual reports with some interest and to see how it develops. Sometimes I'm not here to criticize or anything, but to find the balance of transparency so that the market understands what you're doing. Then on the other hand, not giving away so much, you get eaten up by the market. That's the trick. But you have to, I mean, now you've made a significant acquisition of buying Stanley Bag. Then, of course, it will be very important to communicate how the two together will create value for the clients, for the investors, for the management, or whatever it might be. So then you have to find a way to communicate. Then maybe it's not six fingers to the financial market, it's four, but they cover the same things volume, efficiency, capital usage. And that's a challenge for Sophilkos today, I think. Exactly. Especially for me, that's a share. <laughs> <laughs> You're still in, 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 yeah, well, an, an insignificant shareholder, but an emotional shareholder. Of course, I'm talking about the CPR numbers, but what about the organization then? Uh, the other important thought in the book is the flat organization, not the fat organization. Fat like no, me. but you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not like me. You are not fat, yeah, off okay. yeah. No, but the, the thought behind that was that you build an organizational structure bottom up, and that's based on that the customer is the most important. Not the so, top to down. Not top to down. But then you say, what do the customers need? Do they need solutions? Do they need chronicle security? And so then you have to find the most efficient way to organize bottom up. You can't start to say, we want one business area of this and another one like this. Because every country, every customer is different. You have to find scale when you build the organization. So, of course, if you can dedicate, refine, and specialize the organization, then probably that's more efficient for the customer. If you build bottom up and top down, you should always ask yourself on every level of the organization, do I add anything to the customers? In this perspective from bottom up approach, how how we can position the leadership then? What should be the ideal leadership and the, the role of management? What we can I think the other thing that we said was that culture starts at the top, right? So you need to have, you need to mix this with bottom up with very strong leadership from the top. And that leadership should be based on bringing the company forward, not bringing yourself forward. So you have to be committed and you have to like security. And you have to believe in the fundamental values, and then you come back to the values show the way that sense which starts that. So you combine then organize the bottom up, but letting the culture start from the top. And I think that goes for different levels in the organization. If you have a branch manager who likes his business, who likes people, who likes to do a good job for their clients, then happy employees, happy customers. Then it works and you can build from there. But but also, like I think in Turkey, 
I, I haven't been there that much, but I think Lil K that he also, I mean, there's a spirit. Yeah. And when I, when we did the book in Turkish, I decided and, you know, directly that I let him do it. Because, because I couldn't translate myself into Turkish. Itself. But I felt like, okay, I can trust him. So I let him print the book and everything. And I'm now here to check whether he's written my book or his own book. So maybe it's, the, but, but again, that there's a commitment that creates trust. I think that goes for societies as well, which is a problem maybe we have today. If you don't trust people, you can't create things. You have to, you have to create trust. So then you go, you have to be logical, bottom up, but you have to have commitment. It's triggered by the leadership. Yeah. And also, I guess it, it helps us to, to be in close with our employees and customers as well, which is very important nowadays. I think what's happened now in the world, I think some of the fundamental things that I preach, <laughs> values show the way and focus drives development, if you want to solve problems, then, I mean, when you build different structures of service, that you need to think about how you build it and make it efficient. I mean, we have discussions in Sweden about the police force or whatever. And then again, it takes skills and commitment to run a police force. So some of the basic values that, that we learned, or I learned in Sikilta for 23 years, and over 15 years in India, are the same basic fundamentals. And of course, the devil is in the detail, so you have to adopt it to the reality you live in. But the fundamental principles, I think, are very valid still. Exactly, they are still alive. And regarding the focus, so we, we clearly mentioned, but something interesting, uh, interesting again from the book. You, you tell us that focus on what not to do as well, not only, not only what to do. You should also look at what not to do. Yeah, and I, and the, the story I used to tell was there was a, a famous artist, Lil Babs in Sweden, who told this story on my 50 year birthday. And she said there was a guy who did beautiful horses out of wood up in the north of Sweden. Then they asked him, How can you do such beautiful horses out of these big lumps of tree? And then he said, I'll take away everything that's not a horse. Then it becomes a horse. horse. Yeah. And I think that the same with Sikiltas. Are you a military service? Are you a police force? Or are you Sikiltas? You have to decide. And I think I think that some of the competition has faced that problem if they go into army business or other things. And then that, that dilutes the message in a sense. The focus then drives development, it doesn't stop development. That was one of the Big things for us. That, that if, you, if you want to solve a problem, you focus on that problem, and then when you solve it, you move on, focus on another problem, and then yeah. over time you will solve more problems like that, and you get more confused if you don't. So security us now. If you have a challenge, how, what, what are we going to do with Stanley? And I'm not going to interfere. But then you have to focus on how to do that because otherwise people will talk about it forever. I guess they will handle. And they will handle, I'm sure they will. I hope they will. But if you know what I mean, that if you, if some things, and that came from Melko Schoering from the beginning, was something called the Montessori method. And, and, then, and then when we had our management meetings, Thomas, Dayu, Carl Hendrik Slomba, and me, we thought we had 15 items on the agenda. We need to have time for all 15. But, but no. We thought young that we should have many things on the agenda. Melko said, let's take them one at a time. If we don't have time for the 15, we take the other five next time. But let's sort the 10 we have. Okay. Well, if you want to uh, solve, fine line, you don't let the meeting finish. Uh, well, you stay. Uh, yeah, or you stay, but you also move the same topic to the next meeting and the next meeting until you have solved it. Then, of course, if you're on the planning guards on, on a local level, then maybe you can't have that philosophy. But if you're in management, it's important to solve problems, not just talk about them. Okay. 
and bringing them together in the talk. Yeah. They are complementary to each other. And the, the last one is the value. Maybe the most important one that we we need, and then we can build up the, the rest of what we want to do. So uh, it is really interesting that it, is, it starts at the very beginning journey of security, these values. I think also because it's a special business. There was a book, I think, uh, published in the 50s when some guards stole from your clients. And then obviously, if you're a security company and suddenly people start to steal from your clients, trust if you, you have a fundamental trust issue. So I think it was logical that security company had placed values and policy. And then, but as we started to go deep into that, we understood that you also can take decisions based on your values. It's important to honor the values because otherwise you might lose yourself. And it is endless and it is really uh, very important all the time, nowadays, in the past, and in the future. Yeah. Sometimes when you get a little older, you get more philosophical. And then you come back to a lot of things that happen that they would benefit from having values when you take big decisions and having focus in order to implement and understand how to organize and how to keep track of them. So I apply that to my new business interests. And, mm -hmm. and I also sometimes when I'm feeling philosophical about politics, I think about my principles. Great. But since I'm not a politician, I'm not going to do politics. Good. <laughs> and uh, you are a great German secretist, but uh, for our followers, uh, what we can tell about uh, the life after secretist, your, as an entrepreneur, and the Capio experience, and the SAS, the Indian security business. I think the, let's take the Indian security business okay. because that, that started in 2005-06. And then SAS was a small company. In some ways, it reminds, or when Murat K tells the story about Turkey, it has some similarities. So we came into Mr. Thomas Bailon and myself, we came into this business in 2008 after we left Spilgas, but the contact started before and they were never pursued by Spilgas. And then, and then uh, the journey in India was, it was $50 million revenue in 2007, and now it's $1.2 billion and it's listed on the stock exchange. So for me, this was, you know, when you have your heart in something, you can then continue to have your heart in the same business and in another country. And I think after the growth of the Indian story, that's when I thought that it would be nice to put these thoughts in the book because they are the same in India as in the West of America, Europe or whatever, and that they would be valued. So my book is used in India for training purposes as well, which of course is fun so that they know me as well as Mr. Six Fingers in, in <laughs> India. And, and uh, so that's one thing that I, I, Thomas and I are still on the advisory board in the country. We, since it is with many cultures and many nations, there's not much you can impact other than being an example. You can't tell them what to do. We are just there to help uh, and for support. So that's one thing. And then the healthcare journey was all we thought that healthcare also is a service business. But what Thomas and I didn't understand was the complexity of political and public money. And, and you have to, yeah, it's different yeah. uh, than that. But it's still the same need in healthcare. It's just to employ more people won't solve the problem. They have to know what to do as well. And then after that, so that was more of a normal CFO job. Then after that, uh, we started a 
a company called Doctrine that makes triage. It's almost like an alarm monitoring center for, for healthcare where you don't send the fire brigade all the time. If, it, if there's no fire, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. So we try to get the resource to, to do immediately, immediately what, what they are supposed to do. So that's something I work with. Then I have the telemedicine company in India. That's well. Now, well, in Sweden, we have more than 4 million consultations so far in India. Just to get the answer for about a million consultations a day. 200 people employed. And stuff. So those are the two things I work with now. And I have other things as well, but it's not. These are the main ones. Yeah. And uh, we have some questions. On the chat box, I can see. Uh, ah, again. There's a question. Yes. What do you think about the new generation? The generation Y or Z now? I don't know. Uh, they are not in that category. Uh, what? Uh, different mentality, different approach, different perspective in that changing. But the thing for me now that I work with startups and I work with funky people in the 25 to 35 year age, I, I still say that it's it's much better than some of my retired friends thinking. So I, I have strong belief in the future. Then I think that sometimes a crisis, like now you know when there's a crash and it's not that easy to find money, and suddenly these startups start to talk about the power to profitability. Then suddenly my own principles come to life again. And when you merge, then the, the eagerness and the, of the young people, and then maybe with some philosophies from the old people, it, it, can, it can become stronger in the future. So I, I'm a firm believer in the, the new generation. And I think it's much, much better and sometimes what a lot of people think, if that's correct to say, maybe I'm, uh, but, but the, when you retire, it seems like people say it, it was always better before. And so I, I think if you take my book, it's not, if you can pick up a few things out of it, and use it for the future, that's the biggest reward, because just to start an argument, whether it was perfect, what we did or didn't do or whatever, it's, it's not the point. The point was more to give some input to the future. So I don't know if that's an answer to the question, <laughs> but I think if, if the old managers don't listen to the young people, then they will be dead in the end, which we will anyway, but <laughs> it will go quicker. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from Risha. Why is security preferred over a financial company? I guess how you decided to to join Securitas? I guess you you started as an auditor in, in WC also. You had an experience there, and then a lot of things are coincident. So if you want to, I I was having a sauna bath in Malmo, and I I I met the guy from this investment investment company and he said why should you work with audit all your life come and work for us instead and then i sort of he triggered something that maybe i would thought of for four or five years but so then i jumped over so that was a coincidence but then the more philosophical thing is that if you're an auditor you tend to look at the books that are already closed and you use just the financial information to prove whether it's correct or not. So it's all looking in the way of your mirror. Whereas if you work for business, I think my brain is more purple, not just a company blue or whatever you say. It's a mix of red and blue. And then my own nature as a person it was more fun to be part of the business journey for me. You know. And then of course, when I joined Securitas, did we know what security was going to become as a post -trial. So then you're back if you have a direction and you work hard, these dreams come true. Then yeah. it continues. Yeah. 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 And we have another question. 
uh, what should we focus on in hedge accounting? What are your recommendations for financial risk management? Uh, <laughs> I guess it's hedge, hedge accounting is too complicated. I guess it is more about uh, today's Turkish uh, participating economy. I can understand. No, but you, from a simple point of view, it's still as always when we talk internally, we always talk in the local terms. Yeah, it, and yeah. the local yeah. conditions. So when you you can say when you when you run your business, you run it in Turkey. Local currency. And then you translate. That business into whatever rules or you have to follow to, to get the aggregate. That when you run your business, you have to, and I think still 99% of the business is local. Turkey, for example, has always been that you don't sell or deliver locally. That means the hedge accounting, I don't know. The, there are lots of new things that the auditors make up to make more money to account for the lease contracts and, and provisioning and insurance and things that can yeah, be on the uh, on our yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that yeah. it's important to keep track of this. Um, yeah. um, what, what should we focus on yeah, this, this hedge? How should Securitas adapt himself to new organization, new generation? Actually, we talked, I guess, we talked yeah, the, yeah, the gen generation. And uh, going back, back to my, my questions, uh, a few words about the closing. Uh, there are lots of good quotations, really. I, I, li I like the book. <laughs> <laughs> I read for the first time years ago. So for this process, I again tried to remember the highlights. I noticed I put first we, we bought it on the on the uh, Amazon Kindle. At that time we couldn't find the original one, the English one. Then we, we brought it with the help of uh, Securitas UK at that time. Uh, and I put some uh, highlights, uh, flash yeah. marks uh, on the on the iPad. You say that Financial reporting is an art, but accounting is a science. Yes. It, it is really very interesting and very, uh, from my perspective, it's a very good recommendation for, for, for the young people, maybe young generation who are interested in this finance accounting work. I try to, we try to make examples so that people will understand. The details are not right. You can't paint a picture of something. And if you take Picasso, he practiced to paint proper things for a long, long time. And then he could do the art, which was very expensive. I think it's similar with accounting and financial reporting that the Kilkas has all these reporting factors. Ultimately, it boils down to a few things you have to present to convey a message of where you're going, where you're coming from, and so on. If you can't do that in a way so that people understand, no one will buy your art. But if the bookkeeping is not right, if you don't have the skill sets to the begin from the beginning, then, then your art will also be rubbish. Yeah. So I just thought it was a good, uh, a good quote. And, and we did have a, a controller meeting in Caprio. I think. Then I bought a set of paint, paint what do you call them, the brushes mm. and colors and stuff. And they were supposed to draw something in the meeting, and there were the three boys that, and that was for the doctors because they never accepted the financial reporting. So that then you had to have them to draw something. So we had a team that was financial. Yeah, accounting is a science. It's so. one of our prerequisites in our local meeting because otherwise you lose your 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 focus and you start to discuss uh, whether the numbers are correct or not. I know. Uh, you you lose momentum. So for for the long 
long, long years. We, 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 we solve that, I can say that. Uh, and we always focus what to do and what not to do. Uh, and getting closer to a final word about the conclusion, bringing them the, all the whole uh, thoughts, your journey, your experience. You say that uh, in the conclusion part, it starts that approximately right is better than exactly right. Yeah, and, it, and I realize now when I talk to people that were not these filters, uh, sometimes they make fun of approximately right because they think that bookkeeping is a science. But then I think so the whole message was that the details have, have to be right. So you have to have good values, you have to have your focus, you have to have a reasonable organization, it will never be perfect. And you have to have some KPIs and they and not all of the four have to be perfect. But if they're all approximately right and they, they send the same message, then it becomes much stronger than the parts. And, and that was also the whole philosophy with Securitas was if Securitas isn't good enough for you, find something else to do because there is someone has to do security. So it's all better to be approximately right than the same. I think that goes for, as I said, a society that you will never get everything perfect. You can't solve all the problems at the same time. You have to have yours. That's how the toolbox came about. That, that the thing was, was the first element. Then my story, well, that is that everyone else thought that was so good, so they had to make their own. But, but then, of course, yeah, you see the toolbox. Wouldn't that was produced in Barcelona. Thousand one or something. Uh, more than thousand people yeah, you you just yeah. and they they more than thousand people got stuck in the security yeah, controls at the airport with the big box. What are you going to use? Yeah, this yeah. <laughs> no. So the book was not was made the way I wanted to make it. It was not made by publishing. That's why I haven't sold so many books. <laughs> yeah. But they are used where it matters most to me. Well, and the car hangs on the. It is everyone's right, not approximately right. Well, maybe to end. Carl Henry, I met Carl Henry when I was finishing the book. And then he said that, you know what? And then he worked for Eric. Then he said at the time that you know what made Securitas at least a little bit successful was the fact that for a while Thomas and I we, we walked the talk. And he said it's not that many companies where you can keep that spirit. So I think that's the yeah. challenge for Securitas going forward is to, to keep the spirit going, walking the talk and doing things approximately right, not exactly wrong. Find a way to measure this. And Carl Henrik, he, he, he thought that that was really his thinking well. And his only problem was that he didn't write the book. But that, I mean, that was funny, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you really for this opportunity. It was a great pleasure uh, for us. And we are finishing so, our conversation. So from one king to another. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy your your turkey trip. Yeah. I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you.